Good morning. My name is David Greenfield. I'm the councilman from the 44th Council District in Brooklyn. I'm privileged to serve as the chair of the Land Use Committee. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee to our last Land Use Committee of this session. I know I am getting misty-eyed as well, Councilmember Cohen. Thank you for that. I want to first recognize Councilmember Gentili, Councilmember Palma, Councilmember Garodnik, Chair Ku, Councilmember Lander, Councilmember Levin, Councilmember Rose, Councilmember Barron, misty-eyed Councilmember Cohen, Councilmember Kalos, Councilmember Traeger, and Councilmember Grudenchik. As always, I would like to thank Chair Salamanca, Chair Richards, and Chair Ku for their outstanding work on our land use subcommittees, especially for the hundreds of hours that they have put in each and every single year over the last several years. It's really been a privilege and a pleasure to partner with the three of them. Thank you, Chair Ku, thank you, Chair Richards, and thank you, Chair Salamanca, for your outstanding leadership. I also want to recognize that this being the sixth day of Hanukkah, we are joined by my son Shua, who has the day off, and he has joined us for our last hearing. Shua is eight years old and very excited to be here. Thank you for joining us, Shua. We have six items on our agenda for our consideration, five recommendations for our subcommittees for approval, and one motion to file an application that has been withdrawn. The first item is LUA31, which is the designation by LPC of the Salvation Army National and Territorial Headquarters, located at 120 to 130 West 14th Street in Councilmember John's District, Manhattan, as an exterior landmark. This was built from 1923 to 1935. This Art Deco-style complex, including an office building and an adjacent auditorium structure with a distinctive recessed entrance portal, has served as the headquarters of the Salvation Army for more than 80 years. Our second item is LU-512, the Queens Hospital Center T Building Lease. This is an application by the Health and Hospitals Corporation for approval of a 99-year sublease for a property located at 261 Parsons Boulevard in Council Member Lansman District in Queens. Approval of this lease would allow for the development of 206 units of housing, 75 of which will be supportive housing for those at 60% AMI. Of the remaining units, 79 will be affordable to those at 60% of AMI. 51 will be affordable to those at 100% of AMI. The development will also contain 1,200 square feet of non-residential space to be used by HHC and 8,000 square feet of community facility space. I know Councilmember Kalos is going to share some thoughts with us on this project, hopefully. Our third item is LU 832, the You Have Tax Exemption application for a property located at 278 East 7th Street in Councilmember Mendez District, Manhattan. HPD is the applicant for this tax exemption under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The property contains an existing six-story rental building with 17 units, most of which are occupied and all of which will be converted to home ownership housing units. The sponsors you have, HDFC, will also rehabilitate the property in order to ensure the continued affordability. Existing exemption must be terminated and replaced with this new 40-year Article 11 exemption. Our fourth item is LU833, the Mother Gaston Disposition and Tax Exemption Application for property located at 249 Mother Gaston Boulevard in Council Member Espinal District in Brooklyn. The property is comprised of two tax lots, one of which was conveyed in 2006, however, the other lot was erroneously excluded from prior applications. The result was never conveyed. I know this is shocking, but once in a while, government makes mistakes. HPD seeks to rectify this and convey Lot 8 pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law to the current owner and to apply tax exemption pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law to the entire property, Lot 7 and 8. Finally, today we have LU-816, the Lower East Side Inclusionary Housing Tax Exemption application filed by HPD for properties located at 377 East 10th Street and 544 East 13th Street in Councilmember Mendez District in Manhattan, which are comprised of 26 home ownership units. We'll be voting to approve the application to replace existing J-51 tax exemption with an Article 11 tax exemption for 40 years, retroactive to December 17, 2015, the date of construction closing and the date of regulatory agreement with HPD. The units are targeted to households at 30 percent of AMI to 80 percent of AMI. LU-797, the Archer Green Tax Exemption application has been withdrawn by HPD. We'll vote on a motion to file it to remove from our calendar. I want to recognize that we've been joined by Chair Salamanca. As I mentioned before, the Chair has done extraordinary work in his subcommittee. I want to thank you for his leadership and hard work, the time that he's been Chair, and uh, the record amount of housing, affordable housing, he's brought to his district. Congratulations on setting those new standards. I also just want to take the opportunity to thank several folks, this being the last land use committee that I am chairing. I want to thank, of course, Raju Mann, who is the director of our land use division. Raju, where is Raju? 
Raju, who's hiding in the corner as usual. That's for security purposes, by the way. What happens is if someone comes in and they're about to attack one of us, he speaks into a secret microphone, and then all of us are protected. Raju, I have to say, has shown endless patience throughout the land use processes. And I think that we've worked on, what, some 1,000 land use applications. And I have to say that he's actually never gotten visibly frustrated or angry at any of those times, which is incredible when you consider about the variety of challenges that we've had. And I want to thank you, Raju, for your outstanding leadership. Well, well deserved. And we're really grateful. I also want to thank Amy Levitan, who is our deputy director. I'm quite convinced that we would never have quorum, among other things, uh, but, for, but for Amy. And uh, we have all made her life very stressful over the years. And so, Amy, we apologize to you for uh, not following the rules and regulations, but we appreciate that you've kept, us, uh, you've kept us on the straight and narrow. Speaking of the straight and narrow, Julie Lubin works hard every single day to make sure, in fact, people don't realize one of the reasons that we always start with full committee hearings is because Julie makes sure that we got 11 people in the room before we actually start the committee, which is rare for committees, and that's because it's, a, it's an old precedent in the land use committee that we should have the votes before we actually vote. And Julie, I want to thank you for your, I know it's a crazy idea, we should have the votes before we vote, but it's not super democratic, but there is a, there is a method to our madness, Council Mogorodnik. The point being that she works very hard. She's an outstanding counsel, and we're very grateful for her work. I want to thank Dylan Casey, who has worked tirelessly over the years, Jeff Campagna, for his outstanding work on my own staff, Elena Sacheva, and my counsel, and the point person on land use, and Danny Perlstein. I also want to give a shout out to our phenomenal project managers, Brian Paul, James Lloyd, Liz Lee, Jeff Yoon, John Douglas, Rosie Perez, who has the unenviable task of doing sidewalk cafes which I could have sworn one of the ideas was we're going to give it to another committee, but I don't think we actually pulled it off, Raj, did we? No, we're still stuck with it in land use. Maybe uh, Council Member Lander will explore that for some time in the future. Finally, I just did want to note that uh, over the last four years, we've been very busy. We've done some amazing stuff. We passed Intro 775, which was landmarks reform. We instituted deadlines in the landmarking world for the first time in the history of New York City. We cleared the backlog of nearly 100 buildings that were there for over 50 years. We passed mandatory inclusionary housing for the first time. You have to mandate that you actually must build affordable housing housing in New York City, which is exciting in the world of zoning and land use. We passed ZQA. Nobody knows what that stands for, but we know that ZQA actually, the short version is that it makes it easier to build affordable housing in New York City, which is exciting. Yes, exactly, exactly. Zoning for all. That's right. That's right. That's going to be a new theme of a mayoral candidate in 2021, zoning for all. And um, we, we passed, I think originally the administration said they were going to do 15 rezonings. Is that roughly right, Raju? Around 15 rezonings in the first four years. Raju and I laughed. We had a bet over how many rezonings that they would get through. And quite frankly, we both lost because the number ended up being far short of even our expectations. And uh, there were three rezonings that went through. Very excited about these. Of course, we did East New York, which was amazing rezoning we did in Council for Espinal's district. We did the Far Rockaway rezoning. Is um, Chair Richards here? Where is Chair Richards? He's not here, but he did, he did yeoman's work on that. And then, of course, we did the Harlem rezoning just recently in the Speaker's District. Not to forget, even though technically it's not a neighborhood rezoning, it took uh, probably a good 10 years off of his life and is responsible for at least the three gray hairs that you could see, which is the Midtown East rezoning in Council Bergerodnik's district. And we congratulate him on that. And that was a terrific achievement as well. And um, just this past month, for the first time in New York City, we created actual protections for industrial business zones as well in the form of self-storage regulations. And that was very exciting. I know very near and dear to Councilman Berlander's heart. I want to thank him for all his work on that. And we even had a zoning symposium last year at Brooklyn Law School, the next 100 years of Brooklyn zoning. And so 
the point of all this is that we've done some amazing work here together. I'm very proud of the work that we've done. I'm very grateful to all of my colleagues for the outstanding work and leadership that you've shown. And I really have, have been honored to uh, chair this committee. I was joking uh, a moment before the committee, someone actually said, you know, the, the powerful chair of the Land Use Committee is here, and I said, it's not true. I said, it is, I think it was uh, Councilman Rogodenchik who said this, I said it is in fact the chair of the powerful Land Use Committee. Right, because the committee inherently itself has a lot of power and it's one of the great privileges that we have in the city that we can, and the council, have the final say on all zoning and land use items. And I will say that despite the occasional criticism from Connor and others at Politico, Connor deserves a shout out for actually being the only reporter to show up here today, the, <clears throat> the reality is that we get it right nine times out of ten. And folks, if we were basketball players or football players who actually hit the ball or scored nine times out of ten, we would be in the Hall of Fame. And so I, I like to think that what we've done here is extraordinary. And even when the media doesn't think we got it right, there are other issues at play where we may have actually uh, focused on points and privileges that we believe are in the best interest of the city and the city council. So I'm certainly proud of the work that we have done here. And I want to thank all of my colleagues and especially want to thank the outstanding staff because but for the staff, none of this would actually come together. I want to finally now call a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and with the support of the local members to approve LUs 52, 512, 816, 831, 832, and 833, and to file LU 797. And once again, I want to thank you all for your patience, for your collegiality, for your hard work, and for generally respecting the prerogative of members in their district. With that, I will turn it over to the clerk and ask him to please call the roll. Committee Clerk Matthew DiStefano, Committee on Land Use, roll call vote to approve LUs 512, 816, 831 through 833, and to file LU 797. Chair Greenfield. Sure, and you want to say aye and all? Aye and all. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Aye and all. Gentilly. It's a tough act to follow, but uh, may I explain my vote? Councilmember Gentilly to explain his vote. I, too, want to uh, congratulate the uh, professionals here at the uh, land use staff, consummate professionals. Uh, probably uh, one of the uh, longest lasting legacies that I leave here came from this committee, um, although many of you weren't on this committee or staff not here at the time. Um, the contextual downzonings that we did from this committee uh, in Bay Ridge, 349 blocks in Bay Ridge, and then another 200 blocks in Diker Heights in my district back in 2005 and 2007 will be a lasting legacy that came from this committee, and I'm very, very grateful for that. And certainly the professionalism has continued through the years, and the uh, ultimate consummate professional is our chairman, uh, David Greenfield, and not only a, a professional, but a friend. And I thank you for all your leadership and your friendship over the years. And with that, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Palma. Garodnik. Aye. Koo. I will aye, and I want to thank Chair Greenfield for his dedication and his leadership. Uh, for the last four years in land use matters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Lander. Uh, with very real gratitude to the chair for a term which has been uh, by turns uh, entertaining, speed reading, serious, um, and with some very, very real accomplishments and good work bringing a broad and diverse group of people together to do important work for the city and still even have a little fun too. Uh, I thank you and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Levin to explain his vote. I'd like to vote aye on all, Mr. Chairman, but I would also like to acknowledge uh, the great work that you have done. I would like to acknowledge the great work the staff has done uh, in this term, um, uh, but also I want to acknowledge uh, you with your leadership and ensuring that, um, that this council uh, discharges its duty on land use matters uh, with the, uh, full professionalism and uh, full consideration of all um, uh, parties' concerns. 
Um, you, have, uh, you have done an excellent job as steward of this uh, very important committee. And uh, following up on what Councilmember Lander just said, uh, perhaps um, I know you're going to be busy uh, come January, but if you need to moonlight in any other uh, uh, profession, perhaps uh, uh, they can have a new spokesperson for micro machines, if anyone remembers micro machines, or um, uh, announcing horse racing or a, uh, an auctioneer. Those are uh, uh, three, three jobs where your speed reading um, could really uh, they could really use you and your skills in that. But, Are you uh, saying that when you think speed reading council member doesn't come to mind? Speed reading council member as well, yes. <clears throat> um, but I want to just thank you for uh, Thank you very much. For, and for I, do want, I do want you to know, council member, that we took a survey before this uh, hearing, and uh, f 14 out of 16 members approve of your new haircut, just so that you know. But not, not, not the staff. I think there's, a, there's, there's one, some... one staff member in particular downstairs uh -oh. uh, who who's, uh, has, has a real problem with it. But Fair enough. Duly noted. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for all that you have done. I thank vote aye on all. Rose. Permission to explain my vote. Alison Rose to explain her vote. Chair, um, I've really appreciated uh, how you've handled this committee um, in an even-handed and fair uh, manner. Um, and I, too, am impressed with your, your skills to articulate the entire land use calendar in less than a half a second. So um, I'm sure that that's a skill you'll find useful when you're dealing with um, a community-based organization. And I want to wish you well in your, your new endeavor. And um, to all of the committee members who will not be here for the next um, four years, we're going to miss your skills and, um, and your tenacity to make sure that land use in New York City is fair. Um, for all. So thank you, and I'm going to miss you. And the land use staff is going to be around, so you guys still have to deal with us. <laughs> so, and thank I you. vote aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Barron. Thank you. Um, I want to vote aye on all, with the exception of land use item number 512, the Queens Hospital Center. And um, the reason that I'm voting no on that one is because I wasn't able to get adequate information as to what, in fact, would be the financial benefit to the developer over the course of the 99 years that that developer would have a lease with the city. My concern is, once again, that we're giving away city land uh, to developers that, in fact, uh, remain to be a detriment financially to the city, such as what happened with the stadiums that were built when we realized after the fact that we weren't getting a fair return. So I vote aye on all with the exception of 512. Thank you. Uh, Cohen. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Cohen to explain his vote. Uh, as usual, I'll be very brief, but I do want to uh, thank you here in front of all my colleagues for your leadership. Your, I know I'm keeping your friendship, but uh, it has been uh, an honor to serve on this committee with you. You've done an excellent job. You've been uh, a role model for me, a mentor. I appreciate it. So uh, thank you very much. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Kalos. Pass. Torrit. <laughs> Torres. For, for, for the record, so you understand that the, the, there is, there is a, a brotherly rivalry between myself and Councilmember Kalos, yes. and in passing, Councilmember Cohen recognized that Councilmember Kalos will now, in fact, have, once again, the last word. We'll go back to, we'll go back to the roll. <laughs> Torres. Um, I vote aye, and I just want to say I'm going to sorely miss David Greenfield as a colleague. I consider him one of the brightest minds in public service. He has a razor-sharp wit, and I enjoy the rhetorical sword fighting between Ben Kalos, and that's going to be a, a huge loss for the City Council. So, but thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. We're thinking of going on tour in the spring. We'll, we'll get those dates out there. Thank you very much. Uh, Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Traeger to explain his vote. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just, I'd like, you know, for the committee 
uh, to know, for the public to know who's watching, that during that ZQA process, uh, zoning for quality and affordability, um, the chairman personally, not just staff, which this, and the staff has been incredibly helpful, so responsive and so accessible, but the chairman personally sat down with members to go through every single block that was labeled as a, as a transit zone to make sure that the members had adequate input and adequate say in the entire process from beginning to end. And that is leadership. That is inclusive leadership. And as a matter of fact, the chairman went on to say that if members did not feel satisfied with the transit zones, which would determine where uh, parking would be waived in exchange for affordable housing, that he would push back against the administration. And so he had our back, and by extension, he had our community's back throughout the entire process. And that's just one example of the type of leadership. He didn't just defer to staff, which again has been very helpful. He sat down himself personally for hours and hours with members to go over the needs of their district. And so I cannot thank you enough, Chairman Greenfield, for your, uh, your hard work, your honesty, and just really uh, being with us every step of the way. And I think that you have been a, you've, you've raised the bar for a land use chair in the city council. Uh, and I also just want to commend my uh, subcommittee chair, uh, uh, Chairman Salamanca, who just in a short time as subcommittee chair has really uh, championed so many units of affordable housing, also having members' backs throughout the entire process. He had some contentious hearings, but always was with us every step of the way, supporting us in our communities. So I just want to commend both, both chairmen, and again, uh, you will be missed, and, but you will not be far. So with that, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Grodenschik. I'm going to pass. <laughs> all right, I will draw my pass. Uh, my weeks of experience on this committee uh, has led me to believe that you have indeed been an outstanding chairman, and I want to congratulate you. And uh, we'll miss working with you on an almost daily basis, but I do look forward to working with you on an almost daily basis. Uh, in your new venture. And I also, uh, at this time, want to congratulate uh, my colleague to the West, who's not here, Mr. Lansman, um, for his work on the T building, which has been a bone of contention in central Queens for uh, more than a decade. Amy Levitan is shaking her head, she knows. Um, it was originally a tuberculosis hospital with beautiful, absolutely beautiful uh, balconies built during. Uh, I think during the 1930s as a, probably a WPA project. Um, but hopefully um, this, this will take and it will be a great addition uh, to the Jamaica Hills slash Kew Gardens slash Briarwood slash Hillcrest communities because it's right in the middle of everything. With that, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Salamanca. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Chair Salamanca to explain his vote. Uh, first, I want to I want to thank you, uh, Chair Greenfield. Uh, in my short time in the council, you've been uh, you've been a friend and you've you've guided me uh, through some of the uh, some of these land use matters that I may have quite questions on. And as chair of the subcommittee, we work closely to ensure that we get members to a good place so that we can move these projects forward and bring true affordable housing uh, to the city of New York. And with that, I congratulate you, and I will eye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Kalos. We save the best for last. So I do, in fact, now get the last word as uh, you and uh, Council Member Cohen so aptly noticed. Uh, we, I'm not sure if you remember when we first met in a, in, at a December holiday party in some basement, thanks to Jenny Berger, probably something like 10 years ago, but it has been a pleasure to serve with you. Uh, I think that uh, it is clear that you have empowered members in their ULERP negotiations and that this has been an incredibly democratic committee. Uh, you made mandatory inclusionary housing and zoning and quality for all happen. You amended it in a way that made enough members happy with it that it was a different proposal than what the mayor put forth and I believe will benefit the city. At least I know it will be benefiting my district. Uh, on introduction 755, you brought meaningful reforms to the Landmarks Preservation Commission and even with advocates where you weren't able to make all of them happy 
and some people, even perhaps myself, voted no, you still made reforms to the original bill that you didn't necessarily have to make that made the bill uh, better. Uh, when we were dealing with the proliferation of buildings for billionaires, you've actually protected my district from getting, at least in the East 50s, buildings taller than 1,000 feet, and that is huge. Uh, the Land Use Committee hadn't been known for doing legislation. In addition to Introduction 755, you also took on the issue of uh, privately owned public spaces, really shined a light on it, and President Trump, and really helped reform that, and I appreciate the partnership. Uh, in what probably uh, made the politicos, uh, Gloria Pasmino and Sally Goldenberg, a little bit unhappy, uh, we've been kinder and gentler with one another as each Yom Kippur comes around and we uh, apologize and seek forgiveness for one another, and I think that uh, this year has probably been uh, less, uh, <laughs> less entertaining and, than usual, but it is rarely boring, and uh, I guess I, I will uh, hold my vote. I just need to know whether or not you will continue your radio show. Mm, that's where it's currently under advisement, but in the short term, we're going to keep it going. If, if you will keep the radio show, then and, and if I can come on the radio show, I, I will vote aye on all. Okay, seems fair. And thank you for your great work. Thank you very much. At today's Land Use Committee vote breakdown, LUs 816, 831 through 833 were adopted by a vote of 15 in affirmative, zero in a negative, and no abstentions. LU 512 was, adopt, uh, was adopted by a vote of 14 in the affirmative, one negative, no abstentions. And LU 797 was filed by a vote of 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to thank a very patient clerk for his outstanding work. We're very grateful. And once again, I want to thank the outstanding staff of the Land Use Committee for making us all look good. I also want to recognize that there are two chairs who are not here with us. They're here on the world, but not here on this room anymore, and that, of course, is Chair Dickens and Chair Weprin, and both of whom did outstanding work as well, and I was privileged to serve with them as well. And uh, once again, really just want to thank our colleagues. I want to thank the staff. People do not realize how hard the staff works, how many hours they put in. Many of them are working on weekends and evenings, and uh, unfortunately, council rules do not allow for overtime. Uh, but they're here anyway, and they're absolutely dedicated in a way that very few people are dedicated to their jobs because they care about the mission of the work that we do. Uh, with that, it's been a privilege to serve as the chair of the Land Use Committee for the last four years here in the New York City Council, the final Land Use Committee for the term, the meeting of December 18th, 2017, is hereby adjourned. <laughs>